Hey everyone, we're at 77.6k subscribers and that calls for a special celebration. Today, we're going to play the final chapter of Thracia 776, one of my favorite maps for one of my favorite Fire Emblem games. And we're going to see if we can do it without opening any of the doors. One of the most common complaints about FE5 is that it's very punishing for blind players, and it definitely can be. But sometimes I'll hear someone say like, if you didn't know ahead of time that you have to buy door keys, you can get soft locks, and that just isn't true. Door keys make the chapter a lot easier, but the game gives you plenty of ways to win without them. You can open the doors with any of the three thieves, or you can use Tina's unlock staff. But what if you didn't have any of those? Then you still have options, and I'm going to show that. In addition, this video is an excuse to exhibit some fun tricks you can do in FE5's super exciting final chapter. Let's go over the concept of the chapter first, just so we're on the same page. The goal is to seize the throne, which is in the center of the map, but it's being covered by a magic seal. You can break this seal by standing on the six tiles with a pentagram on them. Then the center will open up, and we can fight the final boss and steal his chair. However, if we start the chapter, a problem arises. All the tiles are now being covered by powerful bosses, possessing high tier weaponry and some skills that might enable to want them to one round your units. Each of them are accompanied by a pair of armor knights as well as a sorcerer. These sorcerers are the absolute devil. They start equipped with the Hell Tome, which will reduce your HP to 1, but they also have Fenrir, a powerful 3 to 10 range one. To make matters worse, every unit inside these rooms gets plus 10 magic from what we'll call the Magic Floor. This increases their offensive power of Fenrir to the point where it will one-shot not only your fragile units, but even the more durable units with reasonable amounts of HP. Since magic doubles as resistance in this game, it also makes them less susceptible to our own magic. Not only are they harder to kill with magical attacks, but it's also harder to inflict status on them, since our own units need to have more magic than they do. The sorcerers hover around 10 base magic, so even if we have a capped out unit with 20 magic, they might not be able to use sleep or silence on them. You might also notice that the sorcerers have a door key. I used to think that the idea behind the door keys was to give the dark mages a way out of their rooms if they didn't see any targets to attack. That would give us a good way to sneak in, but unfortunately that method is a dead end. I asked Miasis, an experienced Thracia hacker, and she said that they are specifically programmed to never use their door keys. Pause the video if you want to read through their findings, there's some pretty funny trivia in there. So if the sorcerers aren't going to be part of the solution, they are part of the problem and we have to get them out of the way. Each of the rooms requires a different approach depending on what the boss and the armor knights inside have. This is where it's important to take a careful look at your own units and to match them up with the correct room. Ideally, you have 6 units that just one round everything at 1 or 2 range and never die, but that is rarely going to be the case. If you've made it through the entire game so far, you probably have enough units that one round sorcerers, and units that can survive and kill the enemies inside, to complete 6 rooms, but they might not necessarily be the same 6 units. This team certainly isn't like that, this is just a save file I got long ago from the team that worked on the translation patch. It has some really amazing combat units like Sed and Galsis. And it's one really strong, really funny character raised from the ground up, but overall the team is pretty average. I built this clear around the units I had available, rather than the other way around. But that said, I did save myself some headache by using an improvement to the game. Normally you can't rearrange your units in battle preps, but if you set this option to 2 rearrange units, you can. I think this is the way most people prefer to play, uh, but if you're playing actual vanilla FE5, you might not be able to get the units exactly where you can. Usually though, there's at least one configuration of your units that can get the job done. I also didn't bother factoring in like enemy stat variants. Usually in FE5, enemy stats can vary a fair bit, and this can make it a bit frustrating if you're trying to reset. But I think the impact on this strategy would be minimal anyway. The stats on the bosses do not change, and a couple of points on the other enemies don't really change a whole lot. Uh, case in point, the upper left room with Porcus, the Thief Fighter, he only has a Berserk Edge, which cannot attack at 2 range. So if our unit simply leaves the door unopened and one rounds the Sorcerer, they only have to worry about these bow armors. And fortunately, these only carry Venom Bows, which are very weak. The unit that I've chosen for this job is Selfrina. She has not gained any strength through level ups. She starts with 5, gains 2 on promotion, and then loses 1 again from dismounting. But with the Brave Bow that she gets from talking to Glade in Chapter 13, she can still hit the 2-shot threshold. Because the Brave Bow is just that strong. And because Sorcerers are weighed down to 0 AS, she can also just quadruple them if she doesn't 2-shot. 
It's okay if she takes a counterattack from hell, we don't care about that. Uh, funnily enough, you could also try to shoot for a killer bow critical. Her first hit would have 25% crit, because it caps on the first attack like that. And she only has a pursuit critical of 1, or she only has a follow-up critical modifier of 1, which means her crit wouldn't increase on the second attack. Uh, you might think she gets plus 20 crit from Glade, it's actually only plus 10. I realized this after I devised the clear. Uh, I thought they had a mutual plus 20 support, but it turns out while Selfina gives Glade plus 20, Glade gives Selfina only plus 10 to her hit, avoid, crit, and crit avoid. But that's unfortunate. Uh, anyway, we don't care. We have to break well. We can just kill him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Selfina, well done. Now, the other rooms are a lot more dangerous. The next room has Bovis, the Gauss's replica. He is dangerous for all the reasons that Gauss's is. He has 1 to 2 range on his Master Axe, as well as the Fire Sword, I guess, but the Master Axe is the big threat. He has capped out strength, skill, and speed. He has Astra and Luna, as well as five Vigor Stars, which means that for once during his turn, after he's moved, he can just have a 25% chance to move again. You never want to fight Bovis. But even with the Magic Floor, he only has 10 Magic, which means any Staff user with C Staffs and 20 Magic can put him to bed. And for this strategy, we only need one such unit, and that is going to be Sarah. And now it's safe for anyone to kill the sorcerer. Uh, the armor knights inside have hammers, so they are go don't get threatened at all. I'm going to use Set for this job. Even though the sorcerer is boosted by a magic floor, he is no match for, for Seti's might, which can 2 it KO without any need for crits or deaths. We have the option of giving either Set or Sarah another turn with Lara's Dance and have him help out other groups, but before we know what those other groups need, we'll let them play their turns out first. This next room is arguably the hardest one. Inside is Canis, and she's modeled after Sarah. She has the most devious build of all the bosses. She has a Berserk Staff, which will turn one of our own units against us, and due to her 30 magic, it's practically impossible to neutralize her with status effects, like we did to Bovis. She also packs a punch with a 42 attack Nasratu, and that's made even more lethal by her skill set. Miracle introduces a lot of unreliability when fighting her. Her luck is 13, so she has a 39% chance to simply dodge any lethal attacks, and then she'll activate Wrath, doubling her 42 attack and probably killing you in return. And if not, there's always that chance to adapt, of course. This save file does not have a team of 3 units that can deal with Canis on turn 1, let alone dealing with her and the Sorcerer. Fortunately, Canis will always prioritize using Berserk over attacking, so we can simply use Galsus to take care of the Sorcerer. The Flame Sword will not suffice due to the Magic Floor, unless Galsus procs Luna, but the Master Axe destroys them. Master Axe in general is very good against these Sorcerers because it's brave and 1-2 range, and usually hits hard enough on their low defense stat to kill them. Now any unit with B rank and axes can use the Master Axe, so that can include someone like Dagdar at base level, or you can even have Ralph use his Hand Axe like 10 times and he'll be able to use it as well. Now the reason I use Gauss specifically for this room is because there are Master Lance armors inside. And a unit that can one round a sorcerer and then survive four hits from the master lances is pretty rare, so Gals is a good pick here. Again, we have some actions left over with Safi and Salem, but we'll get into those when we know what the other groups need. The bottom right group needs a very durable sorcerer killer. The boss is Tigris, modeled after Dakdar, and he comes with a really high strength stat and a master axe. We know now from experience how much that weapon hurts. 
Before Tigris moves, we also have to survive two rounds of a Master Bow from each of these Armor Knights. You could have a unit that survives but does not kill the Bow Armors, kind of like what Selfina did, since that would block Tigris' attacks. However, this save has a much better solution. Meet Super Nana, captain every stat including a massive 80 HP. She's clearly received a lot of favoritism in this playthrough, including the Wrath and Paragon manuals, and I'm assuming a lot of scroll level ups. I still left one of those scrolls in her inventory. I recommend one of those on anyone who faces the bosses in this chapter to avoid getting crit. The Earth Sword kind of works like Nosferatu at range, draining the enemy's HP when she counters with it, and when you combine that with Wrath, Nana is a one running machine, and she'll take care of all the physical enemies in this room. However, Wrath doesn't work on player phase, so she can't do enough damage to the Sorcerer unless she gets a lucky 18% crit, so we gotta find something better than that. Asbel also doesn't have enough attack to Tooth Kyo, but he has a lot more crits. The forecast says he has 58. That's not entirely accurate. Like I said earlier, your first hit is capped at 25% crit, and the second attack will benefit from his follow-up critical modifier, which is, in his case, is 4. So if you multiply 58 by 4, you notice that Asbel's crit rate is roughly 1 more billion. I know it looks like Asbel wouldn't kill with the crit, but as I've implied earlier, Gracia crits just double your attack power before considering enemy defense, so that lets him easily kill with the crit here. Now we managed to kill the Sorcerer, but Asbel had his HP reduced to 1, thanks to Hell. And he is in danger of getting killed by these enemies. Even if we do heal him, uh, he will still be in danger from the Master Bows and Tigris. What we could do is rectify this with Lenon's Warp. We could have Warp Nana over here in front of Asbel, and that way they can't attack him. But for very funny reasons, we don't want to do that. Uh, what we'll do instead is we'll warp Asbel out of the way to a room where his talents will be more appreciated. And the room with the Galsus clone will work best because it still needs someone to mop up the Armor Knights. And he'll benefit from the support bonus that Set gives him from three tiles away. Uh, it's plus 10 to his avoid, among other things. And now Nana can take Asbel's place and, you know, do what she does best. Leaf's group has a pretty daunting task. They have to take care of Moose, a clone of Raedric, who has the Loptrian Fang. Basically, what Loptrian Fang does is inflict a reverse critical on your attack power, cutting it in half before factoring in their, his 16 defense. His 38 magic makes him practically impervious to status and magical attacks, and his skill loadout bears similarities to Canis. Pavise has a chance to negate your attack entirely, and if he gets a counterattack with Wrath, you're probably dead. You're better off letting him come to us. He only has one range, so again, we could just kill the Sorcerer through the door and we'll be fine. Xavier is up to the task with the Master Axe. 80 hit in 1RN is a little shaky, but it gets 4 chances, and it's okay if he gets hit on the counterattack. You could augment his hit with the Brave Bow, but since Selfina is using that, that is not an option here. If it wasn't for Leaf, his hit rate would be even worse. Uh, he's getting plus 10 from their personal support and another plus 10 because Leaf is holding the Kingmaker, which gives him charm for extra plus 10 hit and avoid on Xavier. Now, Xavier is a general, and you'd expect those to be able to tank the Master Axe armored axes that are inside, uh, but they have around 30 attack each, and they will hit twice. And Xavier's, I think, is roughly a base level with 38 HP and 17 defense, so he'll take 13 damage from each hit effectively. And that'll kill him in three hits, so he's at risk of dying, so we'll have to do something to help him out here. Uh, what we could have done is give him a stat booster, or more level ups, or simply use a more durable unit. Uh, we could also get lucky with dodges, of course, or you could activate his own puffies. Now, Normally you could use Leaf here, uh, start working towards having him kill Moose with the Braggy Blade, a uh, weapon that only he and a couple of other units can use. Not only does the Braggy Blade negate the effect having attack of the Loptrium Fang, but it also has armor effectiveness, so it cuts through these guys like butter, but I have a different plan. Uh, I put the Braggy Blade on Fergus instead. Fergus was in Leaf's group because I needed Xavier there, as well as Shruff. So I'm gonna have Leaf move towards Leaf's group instead. We'll hold off on Shruff's turn for the same reason we hold off on the other staff user's turns. Now, the last group only has two people remaining, and they have to take care of Draco, a sniper with a Master Bow, as well as Adept, Miracle, and Wrath. I don't think I have to explain anymore why this skill set is a nightmare. Uh, Ocean actually has the entire toolkit he needs to deal with that. He can survive four hits from that Master Bow, 
And with the Master Axe or the Vooj, he can just one hit kill with a Wrath Crit. Now, he can kill the Sorcerer in front of that with either the Master Axe or the Vooj. Master Axe has a better chance of avoiding the counterattack, but I'm going to use Vooj partially to flex, partially because it has 99 hit. And even if the initial attack misses, he could just crit on the second attack thanks to his high follow up critical modifier. Now normally, the proper play here is to have Ocean keep the Vuj equipped to KO Draco on enemy phase, but to demonstrate what happens if Draco procs Miracle, I'm just going to equip him with an Iron Axe using Macha instead. Now, Macha could literally be anyone. Uh, you could deploy Aethel here for thematic reasons, and it would also give a support bonus to Ocean. It doesn't really matter. And now we've come full circle, and we can use our remaining units to fill any holes that we have left. Uh, the first problem is that some of our units might have taken damage from Hell. And in that case, we can rectify that using Fortify. Uh, I have two, uh, one on Shruff and one on Safi. And, uh, you know, we did take damage, so we might as well. Now that everyone is fully healed, we still have Lara's turn to help someone who's in danger. And in our case, it's Xavier who is in danger of being 3 killed by Armor Nest that get to attack him 4 times total. So we'll use her turn to put one of the Armor Nest to sleep. And finally, we can use Salem's turn to use Ensorcel on Sarah to prepare for a future turn. <laughs> okay, Salem, very cool. <laughs> Wouldn't be a 77.6k special without a movement level up.
Okay, the most imminent problem is that Nana got hit by Berserk. If we don't do something about Berserk, then she might kill the Known. The Known could cast Restore on her to solve this problem. I knew Nana would get targeted because status stabs like to go for a unit with the highest HP, and Nana is the only unit that I have that has 80. We could have prevented this by warping Nana inside the magic room like I said earlier, and this would give Nana the same 30 magic as Canis, and she would be forced to go for her next favorite target, which would be Fergus. But I much prefer Nana eating a Berserk for this reason. This puts Nana in a place where she can't hurt anyone anymore, and also she occupies one of the first six pentagram tiles to open the center. As long as Nana has no targets, she will stay on that tile for as long as I need her to. We do need to take care of Canis though, but this support group of four units can have what it takes. If Sarah gained access to a magic floor, she would now have more magic than Canis thanks to the Ensorcel last turn. Before we warp her onto one though, we can use Lara again to give her an extra turn, which we can use to sleep Porcus. And now we can warp her into this now much less dangerous room and have her put Canis out of commission. Now there's only one bow armor left alive. Oh, I got a movement star. Let me undo that real quick. I don't need the movement stars. Uh, Selfina is not guaranteed to kill any of the armor knights. There could be two alive right now. I'm going to play after if that's the case. Uh, so we might want to make it a bit safer for her. Uh, we can do that by having Selfina kill one if she is able to still. Uh, or we can put some armor to sleep later. Now Canis's room is completely neutralized, so we kind of need someone to be warped in to take care of her. Uh, I put Gals' one as a range of Safi by mistake, so we'll have to do that next turn. Uh, if a unit is put to sleep, all their stats except for HP, Luck, and Constitution are zero, and that makes them fodder for anyone who with a reasonable attack stat. Asbel ended up breaking the Graph Caliber over the last enemy phase, but even Wind is strong enough to take out a unit with zero most stats. Well, most of the time anyway. We have nothing left for Set to do, so he can be the one who helps out Sarah with the Sleep Staff. And if Fergus is in range of Shruff, we can warp Fergus inside to help with the remaining Armor Knight and Moose himself. I could have Fergus attack Moose here, but like I said before, with Pavis and Wrath, that is way too risky. The hit rate isn't even that good. Uh, this is partially because the pentagram tiles give plus 20 avoid. It's better to take care of the remaining armor knight and just kill him. And that way, no matter which way Moose moves, he has a path to get to the pentagram tile himself. In a previous draft, I had used Leaf, used the Braggy Blade instead to fight Moose. Uh, but since Leaf is needed for seizing the throne, this method is easier. And there was unfortunately no time for anyone to help out with the Draco problem in this room. But all we had to do really is bait her off the tile, so we could just move Ocean away. Uh, it may even use him vulnerary if you feel like it. But he did his job. And that's all we need to do for this turn.
Well, these turns are getting less and less eventful. Uh, this turn is mostly clean up. We can take our time, but we do want to finish this chapter before reinforcements show up on the edges of the screen on turn 5 enemy phase. And right now we're on turn 3. Now, Sarah can easily kill Porcus because, again, stats are reduced to 0. Asbel can simply take the pentagram tile. Now, sleeping units are not considered to have their weapon equipped, even though it says so on the stat screen. Which means you can instantly capture if your unit has higher constitution than their target. That was not the case for Asbel versus Bovis, but it is the case for Galsus versus Canis. Now, Fergus may or may not have killed Moose on this enemy phase, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he can still occupy the tile and wait around. That only leaves um, Draco over here, uh, but Draco would endanger anyone who came in here to occupy this tile. So what we can do is put the guy to sleep. Uh, we'll have to do that next turn though, because Sarah's the only one who has the magic to do it, and she's already done something this turn. So we wait. Now Sarah can move onto the tile and make use of her turn to put to bed the last threatening boss, Draco. And we get another unit inside, and that's why we moved Xavier towards Shruff, so we can do that. That's almost the last tile captured. Get the Gels on there, check real quick. And it looks like we have all the pentagram tiles captured, so let's end our turn and see what happens. Good job, Xavier. The other Lance Armor doesn't have enough attack to scratch Xavier's defense, so he doesn't attack at all. Kind of like the Conquest AI. So, now that the central room has opened up, we need to kill Veld. Now, people meme on Veld a lot because he's supposedly weak, and that's fair. He's not like a big bad dragon or a monster, he is just some dude. And his stone weapon doesn't even work at close range, it has 3 to 10. However, he's not completely trivial to kill. He has 80 HP, 20 magic, uh, 15 defense, and a throne that boosts his defense to 25. So our best way to kill him in one round is set. Uh, we should probably boost him with Ensorcel before we send him on his way. So, Set has 45 attack, and thus he would deal 25 damage per hit. Uh, if he crits and he doubles his attack, he would not have 90 attack, so he deals 70 hit, uh, damage per hit. So, a hit and a crit is sufficient to kill him. And Set has enough FCM to get a crit guaranteed on the second attack. And there's also an extra crit or a depth proc to bridge the difference if you don't have Ensorcel. Uh, you could also just take a little longer on a map and kill him over multiple turns, but this is by far the safest way to do it.
That leaves one final warp. On Leaf. And that is how you beat the Thracia final chapter without opening any doors. Thank you for watching. Thank you for getting me to 77.6k subscribers. And we'll see you next time.